I think it's important that we approach interviews the same way that we approached taking classes or giving presentations at school. I remember I, I had one class in college. It was my uh, one of my senior capstone classes, and we had to give a well. We didn't. We had to teach the class one one of the periods. So we it was essentially an hour presentation. Um, the class was an hour and fifteen minutes, and we had to we had to teach it for an hour. Uh, and so that consisted of largely a PowerPoint. We had to talk about uh, some reading material that we had, some papers, um, and we had to allow for a uh, time of questions and answers. Um, but it was an hour long, and I, personally, I'm not, I'm not super like excited about giving presentations or uh, speaking in front of groups of people, but by the time senior year came around, like, I knew everybody in the class, in the major. We all were very much on the same page of, you know, we need to graduate. So I feel like there was a sense of kind of, you know, understanding amongst everybody. Uh, and we all just wanted to, to do well on the, the this presentation. Because each person went differently. Each person went on their own day. There was no, like, two people went on the same day. So if... You, well, you know, on a Tuesday, if that was your day, you taught the class that day. So I think that the amount of preparation that I put into that, I mean, I would spend, I spent weeks and weeks leading up to that, just rehearsing my presentation, making sure that I truly understood the material. Uh, I remember leaving dinner early and then going off to study and just practicing this for hours and hours. Um, and I did that for a long time. And by the time my day was, was, you know, my day came to present, I was very, very ready for it. And I did a good job on the presentation, but only because I practiced for a while, for hours, for, I would I'd probably say at least, I mean, I think at least a few weeks to a month of just going over the same material, making sure that I truly understood it. And I think that as we approach interviews, I think that has to be our same approach. We have to rehearse what we're going to say, right? We have to make sure that we can talk fluently about system design, programming concepts, uh, and just general conversation, just be generally be able to have a conversation about business or, uh, you know, where do we want to be in, you know, five years, that classic question. Those questions aren't you know, just asked to, you know, to create space in the interview. Those are asked because they want to hear what you have to say and how you say it. And I think that the truth about interviews is, is it's a little bit of, you know, it's a, a lot of it is social skills. Sometimes you just have to kind of play the interview game and be able to talk well about what you know, because they want to hear what you know. So being able to talk fluently about uh, programming, system design, and being able to use the terms uh, that they will look for when you're talking about programming is very important. Because if you if you have on your resume, you know I built, uh, you know I built such and such system with Rust, and I I, you know I built uh, you know some database or, or whatever it is you made. They're gonna, you know, they're probably gonna ask you about that, and if they don't ask you about that, I would argue that they're probably looking for you at some point to at least bring that up, um, or at least talk about it indirectly, and, but they really want you to talk about the the technicalities of it. Like, this is important. I think I think you need to talk as technical as possible about all your programming stuff. Because that's the time, right? There's no other time that you have to talk about this. Now, now is the time when you need to discuss in depth why you chose to use RabbitMQ and why you chose to use Rust or why you chose to use uh, WebSockets or whatever it is or databases or, or you know who who knows what else. Now's the time, and you got to make sure that you can talk about it in a way that's you know. The, <laughs> It makes sense. And for it to make sense, you have to rehearse it. You have to rehearse the lines of, okay, what am I going to say when they ask me about this personal project? You know, 
am I going to just talk about what it does or am I going to talk about the the you know the engineering decisions that I made when I went to build this uh, that's the stuff that you you got to figure out and if you don't rehearse it I think the temptation is just is is just to answer it in a way that kind of glosses over the project uh, and doesn't really answer the question at all because what they're asking is they want to know what in the world you did like what what did you what, what did you make like what did you use like how, how did you go about creating this like can you walk through you know any of the the architecture of this or, or just just anything and if you're unable to talk about that in a way that makes sense or you know in a way that uh, just articulates the the the, the problem it, it's not going to go it's probably not going to go as you planned but if you rehearse if you rehearse like if you sit down and you either record yourself talking about your system uh, if you record yourself talking about your personal project or your your previous work experiences or whatever it is and then you play that back you can kind of get a feel for what you sound like and what you sound like on the recording may be different than how you remember it or want to remember so I would honestly just sit down in front of you know or you know at your desk record yourself talking about this and just see what the what how see what you say about your own project or your previous work what technologies do you bring up just kind of off the cuff the first time what architectural you know words are you using are you using system design words like uh, I don't know load balancing sagas orchestration uh, you know what do you what are you sounding like what are you using uh, and those are the kind of things I think that will surprise you because you might be surprised at how little technical details you include on the first pass uh, just because it's not sometimes I think the temptation is that you want to think that the interviewer doesn't want to hear about all the technicalities and they just want to hear about you know what it does or maybe how did it add value or uh, or challenges that you encountered and I think those things are all fine but you got to get into the most technical detail when it's when it's appropriate as possible you know I wouldn't get into the technical details with like the hiring you know the HR department but I would get into the technical details with any of the engineering uh, staff because that's where it really matters because you never know what might is click with somebody if somebody you're talking to is really interested in I don't know a specific database you picked they might just ask you questions not because they're trying to like grill you like with like you know this obscure questions but they just might be curious like if if to me personally if somebody talked about RabbitMQ I would probably I would just ask them questions I just I'm just curious like what what made you pick that or like what what do you think's uh, what do you think's cool about RabbitMQ or like just talk about how you used it and what you what you've been experiencing like did you ever try different exchange types you know did you ever try uh, different cues I don't know just random stuff not because I'm just trying to like ask like crazy obscure questions but honestly I just I'm just curious because I've used it in my personal systems so I just am curious on the from that perspective but it's those kind of things that you need to I think rehearse and honestly just expect that you may be asked a question like that um, now obviously I think I would make sure that you can at least be aware of all like the system design you know buzzwords of load balancing and uh, uh, the containerization and um, uh, distributed transactions or uh, distributed message distributed tracing uh, all that all that stuff just you know just pull up literally like any system design interview book and just make sure that you're broadly familiar with all those things uh, assuming you're not already but um, as far as your own projects yeah I mean if you were, can think back to, to school like I was talking about for how I rehearsed uh, my presentation I've done the same for interviews and I think that that has really helped uh, just being able to talk about 
whatever. Uh, because honestly, I was real bad at it at first. And I remember failing a lot of interviews when I was in college just because I couldn't talk about this stuff in a way that made sense because I wasn't confident. Um, just because like I hadn't you know done it uh, professionally. So I wasn't confident in my own abilities. And I think that that hindered me a lot. Um, especially when, you know, like you're faced with the, the programming interview where it's like, you have to solve some problem when people are watching you that, that can be a real confidence, like destroyer. Um, and that, that's rough. And it, sometimes if that's like the first part of the interview and then you have to talk about things after I completely understand, like that's, that's a bad setup there. That's, that's sometimes is hard to recover from because If you know, like, you did bad on the programming section, like, you just know, it's it can be really hard to talk about anything afterwards because you're like, oh, man, I already already failed this. Like, there's not even any point. And I've been there 100%. Like, I've been there. I've thought that this is pointless now because I knew that I did bad on on this. Uh, I I completely understand. It, it It can be tough, and I think that that's why rehearsing this stuff is helpful because it kind of gives you that confidence that you know how to articulate your point you know how to talk about the things that that you do know um because nothing's worse than nothing is worse than seeing somebody who you know like knows the material really really well but just struggles to talk about it uh you know we've all like we've all struggled with presentations, right? I like, I know, like I've gotten up to do presentations and I've just like mumbled or stuttered my way through the presentation. And I was like, couldn't talk about anything or like I skipped a slide or whatever. We've all done that. Like that's, that's just part of being human, right? So to mini, to, to minimize the, the risk of that, you know, I think just trying to rehearse is just, is just crucial so it also say if we take the same approach to schoolwork as we do interviews and put the same amount of time to all aspects of the interviews what not just the programming you know leak code stuff i'm talking about holistically like be able to have a conversation about it i think if we do that i think it'll help us just in the interview process because interview interviewing is just another skill it's just another thing that we have to do in software engineering and they're hard and they're not fun but it's it's just something that we gotta we gotta get better at so uh thank you all for watching i'll see you next one